everyone, hello. I'm still preparing for the tea time. I just didn't have time to finish doing what I needed to do today, so... I'll get to your comments very soon. Let me just, um... Finish preparing for this. already time for me to order another set of McVitie's. Um, I'll get to your comments real soon, guys. Just need to... Oh, I knew it. This was the one that was stuck. This is, the... this is completely melted together. There's no way to separate them. I should have just thrown it away. train got stuck. These are destroyed. Well, that sucks. See, the thing is, you just never really know what condition the McVities will be in. Sometimes they're just completely destroyed. Who is texting me so much? see who's texting so much. Sounds like it's an emergency or something. Um, it's not. It's just my friends texting each other. I'm part of a group chat, so when they all text each other and stuff, I can hear it. Let me go ahead and... No, I need that to be... Do not disturb. There we go. And then let me go to my channel so I can see your guys' comments. Let's go ahead and start the water. Um, my channel. Live stream. Alright, let's see who's here. We got Blue Ribbon Productions. Hello, Steve. Lachlan. Uh, Tyler. Mike. Ozzy. Um... Wow, YouTube is really pushy. Um, Maritime Historian, Doc is here. 
I can't go back and read everybody's comments, you guys. There's way too many, so I'll just start reading from this point on. Um, let's see. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Mark says, hey, Alex, lovely to see you all. It's Australia Day here in Australia. <laughs> Australia Day. What's Australia Day? Um, Daniel says, hey, Alex, on January 30th, I'm going to be 15. Awesome. January 30th. That's pretty soon. So happy birthday. Ocean Liner Productions says hello. All right. Let's see here. Today we're going to have Earl Grey tea. And, um, and the only treats will be the McVitie's Digestives today. I didn't get groceries to get you know, cucumber sandwiches or anything, so it'll just be this today. Um, yeah. That might be a bit too... I don't know. Um, alright, let's see. Mike says, we've been talking about Splash Mountain and other history things. Okay. Um, uh, Moonzer, please no inappropriate comments. This is a family-oriented channel, so I do not um, allow inappropriate comments on here. Um, Empire says, can I repost my comment? Yes, you can repost your comment um, because I, I, you know, I was telling everybody that um, there's a lot of comments in the top of the chat, and I'll never be able to get through all of them. So, um, if you have a question, uh, feel free to repost it now. But uh, in the coming, in the future, you know, if you've already reposted, don't do that. <laughs> um, also, keep in mind, everyone that uh, I don't read out every single comment. That would be impossible. It would just take too long. I only read comments that are like a question or have something to do with the conversation where, you know, I could actually bounce something off of that or respond to it. Um, Tyler says, saw the Laconia video from Oceanliner Designs three times already. It's pretty cool. Must have been good. Uh, Doc says, hi, Alex. I've been meaning to ask if you're willing to do a Black History Month video. I'm so curious about the minority maritime experience. History can teach us so much about where we are now. Um, I'm open to doing it. The only thing is that in, in those times, a lot of that kind of stuff was not documented very well. So I would have a devil of a time trying to find information or photos on um, any kind of, you know, minorities on ocean liners. Like, the, really, the most information I could find on any minority is actually really more like, you know, a religion, which is the Jewish passengers who traveled aboard ocean liners. I did videos on that because there was a lot of information. But um, in terms of in terms of race and stuff like that, it's hard to find anything on that. There's a few accounts of of um, I think there was a some black passengers that were on the Titanic. Um, but I mean, that's because Titanic's so famous that there's like information on almost everything, but, um, it would be really difficult is what I'm saying. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect there to be a video just because it would be very hard to find that information unless somebody in the chat knows a wealth of information about minorities on ocean liners and has photographs or something that would really help. Um, let's go ahead and, there we go. Um, I was also considering that because my channel is based off of the age of steam, that it's possible that I could focus a story, um, about something invented, uh, by a minority. The only thing is that, um, it would have to be like steam powered because that's what I work on. It has to be something technology wise. So I have to find something that maybe was invented by, you know, somebody who was a minority, you know, um, 
in the Age of Steam. So... You know, like, I know that... Well, no, yeah, see, I know so very little that it probably wouldn't be good for me to even, like, mention anything right now until I've done some, like, serious research on the subject. Um, Ozzy says, congratulations on hitting 35,000 new viewers. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I reached 35,000 the other day. Um, Empire of Waterloo says, Good afternoon, Alex, from the Empire of Waterloo. Your model railroad is turning out awesomely, and you've inspired me to build models as well. I'm working on an HO scale castle right now from scratch. Pretty neat. Wow. A castle. Will it be, like, like what kind of theme is it? Like, is it, um, like, German or Fran or French? I almost said French. French <laughs> or English or something? Um, Lachlan says, Australia Day is a celebration of the founding of, Aus of Austria. The founding of Australia, when first fleet captain Cook discovered Australia in 1788. It is a massive celebration. It is a sort of like independent day in the U.S. I see. Ozzy says, how is your weather today? Um, pretty good. It's just cloudy. No rain today. Just cloudy. Um, Daniel says, what are your thoughts on the Victoria Louise ship? Victoria Louise cruise ship from 1900. I don't know anything about it. I, I know of its existence, and I've seen a photograph of it, but I don't know anything about it. Um... Mark Cooper says, Australia Day is our national day of celebration, a little like Independence Day in the U.S. Pretty cool. And is that, was that today you said? What do you guys, what do you do for Australia Day? I know in the U.S. we definitely light fireworks, whether they're legal or not. Um, and then, you know, lots of people, they barbecue or something. So they'll have hamburgers, hot dogs, or even just like uh, smoked meats and stuff like that, usually for Independence Day. Um, young Ship Maritime Historian says, Hello, Alex. Did you know that if the... Wait, did you know if the Queen Elizabeth still existed and was not removed from Port Everglades, it would be a hotel and museum for a minute in 1970? It actually was a... Whoa, that was really confusing. Did you know if Queen Elizabeth still existed and was not removed from Port Everglades, it would be a hotel and museum for... I don't know if you're asking a question or if you're telling me something. Um, I, I don't think that the Queen Elizabeth would still be in Port Everglades if it still existed today. I think that it would be somewhere else or possibly have ended up scrapped or something by now it's just very very rare for a ship to last that long like as long as the queen mary um in the u.s unheard of unheard of um little gamer says hey i think a coal mine would be a good addition to place in the area in camera's field of view might explain why it's there in the middle of nowhere What? Like on the train layout? That is um, what you're seeing in, the, in what you're seeing in the train cam. That's what's called Tumble Rock Canyon. It was formed by two waterfalls that carved out the canyon, and uh, the canyon is constantly collapsing with new rock work. So, what will be there are two very large waterfalls that will take up the the um, scenery scape, and the idea is that um, because the 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 mountainside is so unstable instead of building the tracks along the mountain like a lot of railroads would do they built a big trestle bridge to go around the mountain so let's see here um let's see ken says congrats on passing 35k thank you so much
Stork Production says, Alex, why is the Lusitania look flat like a pancake? I didn't know it looked like that. I don't know. Um, Isaiah Rodriguez says, what do you think of Japanese steam trains? I don't know anything about them. Yeah. Um, Beluga says, I don't even think I've ever seen an image of a Japanese steam train, to be honest. Um, Beluga says, what's your favorite ship? The RMS Queen Mary. Pretty easy one. Next would be Queen Elizabeth. After that would be RMS Mauritania. Then would be the Oceanic of 1899. Yeah. I actually have a video um, that is uh, my top 10 favorite ocean liners. So that is on my channel as well. Carter Asher says, can you do a live stream on the Queen Mary? When I eventually visit the Queen Mary, yeah, I'll, I'll do a few live streams on it. I plan to stay a couple days if I possibly can, um, and then I can do live streams on those days. Um, I don't know when I'll be able to go down there. It is very expensive to travel down to the Queen Mary, but um, also the ship would have to be completely reopened for me to do that. Um... Ryan G says, let's just talk about all people and not categorize. Um, well, you know, I can understand your point of view, where you would say that, you know, let's not just, you know, categorize or prioritize speaking about certain people. But if you'll allow me to rebut, there are a lot of inventions and stories of the Steam Age that are surrounded around mainly European and American folk. So there's essentially just a lot of white stories. And that's understandable. You know, back then, most of the inventions that we have today were created by white people. It's no secret, you know. But I think that what really makes a lot of people happy is when they can find an inventor that they never knew about that happens to be the same race as them. You know, so it, I think the guy who invented peanut butter was black. That's something that's pretty interesting that not a lot of people know about, if I have that correctly. Um, and so it's not about it's not about trying to, like, just promote a certain race or something. It's just like I want people to see that there's there was other really cool people out there who invented things besides just white people. And it's not like I'm going to be you know, like pushing aside, you know, stories of white inventors or anything. It's just that there's probably some people on my channel who really would find it interesting or kind of cool to see a few stories that are not just entirely focused on white people. And I think a really cool time to do that is in the various months where we celebrate those kinds of things. So there is a Black History Month. It'd be kind of cool to theme that around some black inventors. There's um, a Mexican Heritage Month. That'd be kind of cool to theme that around some Mexican or, or Latino or Latina inventors, you know? So things like that. It's a great way to kind of theme things. It's kind of the same way how during Halloween on my channel, I put out videos that are Halloween themed or Christmas, I do Christmas theme. So I don't necessarily see it that way. I kind of just see it as just another way to kind of bring something new to the table that, you know, would otherwise be very low priority for other channels. So, um, okay, let's go ahead and... I'm pretty sure I... I had turned this on again, right? To boil it? I don't remember. Yeah, it's already boiling. Okay, let's go ahead and pour the full boiling water in there. Okay. 
Um, all right, 425. So at 430, I will come back to that. All right, so. Daniel says, hey, Alex, there was Elijah McCoy who invented a grease pump for steam engines in the 1800s. Ooh, let's see that. Okay. Okay, so I put that in my phone so that way I can kind of look into that later. Um, let's see. Top Impressive Line says, Hello, Alex. Hope you're having a good evening. Congrats for hitting 35k subscribers. I bet you'll hit 50k subscribers within a month or two. I don't know. I've been doing this for, you know, what has it been now? 2023 started 2020, or 2016, so... Four, yeah. This is, yeah. I can't count my head. It's almost seven years I've been doing this, and I barely reached 35k, so I don't know if I'll reach 50k in a month. <laughs> Probably I'll reach 50k in, like, another two years. <laughs> so, um... Oh, that question's not directed towards me. Okay. Empire of Waterloo says, It's not a medieval castle. It's based on a Canadian castle from the 19th century and will be in the movie I'm making. Awesome. Carter says, can you do a live stream on the Queen Mary on May to... Oh, oh, that's way too specific. I live a thousand miles, actually 1,100 miles away from Queen Mary. So going down there would be like spending thousands of dollars to go on a vacation. So going there on a very specific day is... I can't promise that. I don't, I don't even think I'll even be able to go during May. So, yeah, I, I can't say that I'll be doing that. It'd be kind of cool if I happened to be there on May 27th, but, yeah, that's... I think some people think that I live a few miles from Queen Mary. Like, there was one person who thought I literally lived in Long Beach because I make so many videos about Queen Mary, but I, I don't. I live in, you know, Portland, Oregon, so <laughs> it's not easy to go down there. Um, let's see... Laura Jean Carlson says EP Ripley was testing by herself on Mainline this week with no coaches. Yep, I know. The um, the video and photos that are being posted online is from my friend Chris. So he he um, contacted me first and showed me. Pretty neat. Lachlan sounds fun for Australia um, Australia Day. Oh, wow, it's already been almost five minutes. Wow. Mark says, yes, barbecues, lunches, the beach, outdoor activities, fireworks. Sadly for many, it's just an excuse to drink and go silly. Just a pleasant day off for me. It's very hot and fine in Queensland. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's the same thing here for Independence Day. Honestly, like, most people who celebrate you know, the 4th of July here for Independence Day, they don't really care. <laughs> they just are partying that day. It's, it's like a day for them to party. So that's unfortunate, but such is the way. All right. It is time for the tea. You know what would be really cool is if when the Queen Mary reopened, they would 
they would serve afternoon tea as close as possible to the Cunard Way as it would have been when the Queen Mary was still sailing the oceans. Of course, I doubt it'll be like that when the ship actually opens, but it would be really neat to experience like an afternoon tea as close to the Cunard Way as possible. I was talking to um, Steve, who is Blue Ribbon Productions in the, in the comments, um, and we were talking about how there was a, a tea room on the Queen Mary up on sun deck. And uh, he showed me some pictures. It, it's a really beautiful room. It's not original. It was entirely redone in the 90s. But, um, but they used it as a tea room during the Long Beach years. And, um, and I thought, you know, it's not such a bad idea to have a tea room. I mean, it'd be better if you... If they served afternoon tea in the first class main lounge on promenade deck but um yeah but anyway it's not necessarily a bad idea to have a tea room but then again most of the visitors to queen mary are american and tea is not really big in our culture most americans have no idea what this thing is next to me this this thing <laughs> everybody who's not american or from the americas knows what this is it's it's, you know, a simple um, kettle for boiling water. But most Americans don't have a kettle. Um, if they need to boil water for tea, if they ever have tea, they use a stovetop kettle. Um, but yeah, so tea is not really big in our culture. Ocean Liner Production says, I've learned a lot about the Queen Mary from the Queen of the Queens book. Had to restart because I lost my spot and my page that I was on, I lost. I couldn't remember where I was. I'm in chapter 5 or 6 now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're learning a lot. There's a few things here and there that are not accurate in the book, but it, for the most part, it's pretty, pretty good. So, let me go ahead and empty this out. And then pour the tea. I think when the train layout gets more completed and it looks nice, I think I eventually want to take it to be shown off at like train shows and stuff. That'd be kind of cool. I was watching a, a few videos the other day of people who took their train layouts to train shows. And um, I thought, you know, I could do that. I designed this layout so it could be movable, you know, so I could take it places. So I thought, why not? But it won't be ready this year. It'll, it'll probably be ready for its first train shows, maybe next year. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, because it is hard to tell, but in the train camera, there is more rock work that's been carved out and and molded so there's a lot of rock details and stuff that have been added to the mountain okay a little bit of milk um young ship maritime historian says alex will queen mary 2 ever be a hotel and be docked in a port somewhere like the QE2 and the Queen Mary is. I honestly couldn't tell you. It's it's too too early to know for sure, but um, it would be nice if it was uh, converted to a hotel. I'd hate for it to be destroyed after it was, you know, retired from service. Knuckles says, do you know about the Royal Mail crisis? No, I don't. Carter says, do you have a video of the Queen Mary? Do you have a video of the Queen Mary a long time ago? I, I have lots of Queen Mary videos. But I don't know what specific one you're looking for. Isaiah says, what do you think of Disney's River Country? River Country. That sounds familiar. Wasn't that a water park? At Walt Disney World? A water park at Walt Disney I don't know f for sure. I don't know what that is. 
Um. Daniel says, who is the commander of Queen Elizabeth? Um, I've been able to memorize some of the captains and commodores on the Queen Mary, but I have not yet memorized any of the names of captains or commodores of the Queen Elizabeth. Um, I do know that there was a short period where Captain John Jones was either first officer or possibly captain on the queen on the queen elizabeth but uh, i don't know for sure my knowledge is mainly on the queen mary i'm still trying to expand that knowledge but it will take a bit more time um linda says hey alex happy tea time i have a question i was watching a travel vlog from australia and they showed queen Ma the kinard queen mary ship i thought the qe2 retired is this a... What? They showed Cunard Queen Mary ship. I thought the QE2 retired. Is this a new one? Well, I... Okay, I'm trying to piece together your question because I think there's two different questions in there. One is about the Queen Mary. The other is about the QE2. Um... So, I think what you're trying to say is that you watched a travel vlog from Australia, and they showed the Queen Mary 2 in Australia. Because I think it's on its world cruise right now, so I think it would be in Australia, or, or had been. Um, so, I think you're talking about the Queen Mary 2, and the Queen Mary 2... Um, was put in service in 2004 and it's still in service today so it is a relatively new ship only about 18 or 19 years old so i think that's the ship that you saw chilling in the frozen north says hello alex are you going to visit turbinia on your uk tour I would love to, but Newcastle upon Tyne is a very far distance from where I will be. And so I don't think I will have the time or ability to visit the city and see the Turbinia. But it is one thing I would definitely like to see. Maybe if I come back for a second trip to the UK, I'll be able to make it up to there and see more things I didn't see before. Carter Asher says, why do you like Kinnard? I think because I realize that the majority of my favorite ships are all Kinnard ships. So <clears throat> it just, it was really more about like what individual ships interested me the most. And when I thought about it, when I thought about like all the ships that are my favorites, the majority of them are Kinnard ships. So I think it's just ultimately... I just like Cunard ships, so therefore I like Cunard. But I don't think it's really like I prefer Cunard's service over White Star's service. I, To be honest, I know very little about the differences between the two services. Um, but uh, I don't think I have any particular uh, biases towards Cunard. It's just the ships. I just really like the ships. Carter Asher says, where do you form? I mean, I haven't uh, teleported in a long time, but usually I form in a house or in another destination that I go to. That's just my sense of humor. I have actually no idea what you're... I think you're saying, where are you from? Um, yeah, I think that's what you're asking. I am from the Orange County area of California. I say the area because I'm not from any particular city. I've lived in almost every city in Southern California. I mean, in Orange County in Southern California. 
Um, pretty much, yeah. I've had it. I've lived at least in one of each city at some point in my life. So I just grew up in Orange County, and um, Disneyland was basically in my backyard all the time. So I always went to Disneyland as a teenager and then as an adult. So yeah. Um, top impressive line says Alex how come Long Peach only gave people 30 days at first to acquire one of the Queen Mary's lifeboats to get it to where they wanted to go um, I honestly don't know that would have to be answered by the city of Long Beach I can only guess that they were eager to get started on work on the ship and so therefore because the lifeboats were taking up space in the parking lot where they could have you know, staged the construction crews. I think that it was just in their way, to be honest. And also, they needed the parking lot for film crews on the ship, because the ship, it, you know, while it was closed, uh, it was being used as a film set for multiple TV shows and movies. So the parking lot was really very much needed in order for them to park all of the, the um, studio trucks and things like that. So... I think that's why, but I don't know for sure. What I do know is it was Steve Ablonsi, the man who's in the chat as Blue Ribbon Productions, who actually emailed them and asked them to, um, you know, to postpone it, you know, to, to prolong it and give more time. And they added another month to that, but that just wasn't enough time you know most museums and organizations uh especially nonprofit organizations and all that it requires anywhere between six months to a year to do a very fast acquisition of large artifacts like that if it was something small like a very precious spoon or something it could be done very quickly you know it doesn't take much and but um with something as large and massive as a lifeboat, they needed time to get all their permits. There was one company who wanted to get a lifeboat and bring it to their new um, facility in Halifax, Nova Scotia. You see, they were building a brand new multi-use property on top of the old Cunard docks in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And they thought, wouldn't it be great if we could acquire a lifeboat from the Queen Mary, bring it here, restore it, and have it on display on our new property. Even I thought that was a pretty good idea. And they wanted to, and they tried, but but two months was not enough time to get everything done that they needed done. It needed to have a place, it needed to have a plan, it needed to have funding, which would have taken a bit of time to get from investors, and it needed um, all the permits for transporting it across land through all those counties and states and paying for all those permits as well because it is a wide load it, it's uh the 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 um boats are about 12 feet wide and they are just over the threshold for considering it a wide load because i think 10 feet is is the is the point where it needs to be but anyway i'm kind of rambling but yeah that's why um Carter Asher says, why did the Queen Mary have her sister's lifeboats? So, from my understanding, um, if I'm remembering correctly, the Queen Elizabeth was going to last longer than the Queen Mary. So, the Queen Mary is going to be retired first, and the Cunard originally thought that Queen Elizabeth would probably be retired after 1969 because of the uh, the launching of uh, the QE2. So it was probably going to be into the early 1970s that they would have kept the Queen Elizabeth going. And because of that, they needed to upgrade the lifeboats because the lifeboats were originals from the 1940s. Um, and 1930s, actually. Yeah, 19... Queen Elizabeth was 1939's, Queen Mary's was 1936. But nevertheless, that's, that's off the point. But um, But they needed to upgrade the lifeboats because they were, you know over 30 years outdated and by then lifeboat designs had changed so they were getting rid of 
Queen Elizabeth's lifeboats, and Queen Mary was on her way out the door, basically. She only had a few more voyages left, so they didn't want to spend money to upgrade the Queen Mary's lifeboats when she was going to be, you know, retired. But Queen Mary, nevertheless, had some corroded lifeboats that needed to be replaced. So what they did was they got rid of the lifeboats on Queen Mary that needed to be replaced, and then they brought in functional lifeboats from Queen Elizabeth and other ships like Sylvania. Um, I think that, I think those are only the only three ships lifeboats that were on Queen Mary was Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, Sylvania. So yeah, those three lifeboats were mixed together on the Queen Mary, and that's how Queen Mary uh, came to Long Beach was with a mixture of lifeboats. All of them original from the original ships, all the way dating back to the original years they were put in service. Um, but, yeah. Um, Ozzy says, Queen Mary is doing some tours already. No food restaurants are open. Yeah, Queen Mary is... They say she's open, but as you, as you said, it's open for tours only. So I think earlier when I was saying that I'm waiting for Queen Mary, Queen Mary to open, I mean that I'm waiting for her to open for the public. Because the tours are private tours. So you... They're free, they were free, but they're all booked up, and there was only a limited amount of them available. So I'm waiting for the ship to actually fully reopen, like the hotel portion, the actual paid guided tours, the restaurants, the gift shops, all that stuff. So when the ship is fully open, I'm going to make plans to go down there, if I can. I need the money to do it, so we'll see. Um, Carter Asher says, do you like the boxcar children? When I was a kid, I did, but, uh, yeah. I, I don't remember very much of it. I used to have all the books when I was a child. I remember the first book very well, though, because I read that a few times. Little Gamer says, Do you, I, get, I get you probably made a video on this, but why did you leave QMI Restore the Queen? Um, I actually cannot talk about that. <laughs> so, um... It's kind of the same reason why, uh, you know, when you when you leave a job, you cannot just start spouting off about that job. You know, it's defamation. So all I can say is that I left QMI Restore the Queen because I did not like the way I was treated, and it was not very good for my mental health. I just needed to get out of there, so I did. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> Octarian says, how would you react if Queen Mary caught on fire? I would be really disappointed. I'd probably just sit there watching it, you know, just in shock. I would be pretty disappointed. Um, Empire of Waterloo says, my family has enjoyed afternoon tea a lot after watching your tea time live streams. Well, thank you very much. Cheers. <clears throat> Tyler says, oh, I spent the afternoon listening to your audio, Alex. The audiobook? Did you like the whole thing? Chris says, would you like to watch an anime with Armas Queen Mary in it? I'm not sure I'm very much into anime. Don't really have time to watch anything anyway. I'm always busy. Mark Cooper says, oh, Alex, you are so right. A traditional Cunard afternoon tea would be exquisite. I would love that. Cunard ships still do that each day. The ballroom is full every single day. It's almost a ritual. Yeah, I, when I eventually get to uh, go to the UK aboard the Queen Mary 2, that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to, is afternoon tea each day. I know some people, they try afternoon tea once or twice when they're on a voyage on Cunard just to say they've tried it, but, you know, my friend Chris and I, we're going to be having afternoon tea every day, so... Doc says, Alex, did they ever serve a classic Cunard tea in the tea room? I think that culturally it's so important to take that time in the afternoon to chill out and set aside tea. It's such a great idea. Um, the tea room on the Queen Mary, which was put in in the 90s, I don't think they ever served like a classic tea experience. Like, not Cunard style at least. But I don't know for certain. Yeah, I would need to ask somebody. 
Ozzy says, the train set looks awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I put in a new bridge behind me, so it might be hard to, to see because, you know, you can't really see it that well. But, but yeah, there's a new bridge behind me. And there will be update videos soon showing the stuff that's been going on. Um, Chilling says, Alex, do the Queen Mary's current owners have any of the original tea service like what you have? Um, so Queen Mary's always had the same owners. She's had, uh, the owners have been Long Beach. Um, and the Queen Mary does have, um, a lot of the original tea services, uh, in the, the, what they call the archives, which are basically the cargo holds. So there's a lot of them there. I don't know that there's enough for everybody to eat and drink off of, and I wouldn't want them to anyway, because in a restaurant environment, um, dishes get broken a lot. So I don't know if that was your idea, but I would not recommend using original china um, to serve to people today, um, particularly because you can't replace them. <laughs> no one makes these things anymore. So, um, but yeah, I do think that they do have them because there are some that are on display on the ship, even right now. They're in the cabinets that are on display. So, um, but yeah, they do have them. Um, young ship maritime historian the that has nothing to do with my channel um, my channel is all about steam power and the history of steam so I yeah the guy walking across the twin towers has nothing to do with my channel um To answer that question, yes, River Country was a water park, the very first Disney World water park. But why did it close? I just don't know. Young Ship Maritime Historian says, Have you ever been to John Brown Shipyard at Clydebank, Scotland, Riverside Museum? <clears throat> no, I've never been outside of my country before. Chris says, my favorite ocean liner company is White Star Line, although I also like Cunard Line. Nice. Yeah, White Star Line is pretty cool. Carter Asher says, are you close to the Queen Mary? Um, no, actually, I live a thousand, a thousand one hundred miles away. So, I live in a whole different state. So, Queen Mary is located in Southern California. I'm in Northern Oregon. So, it's very, very far. Which, which makes me kind of sad because, you know... Um, It'd be nice to, you know, there's people who live near Long Beach who they can, like, drive by the Queen Mary and see it as they go by and stuff, and I'm kind of jealous of that, you know, but there's not much I can do. Uh, Chris says, hey, Alex, I also liked the RMS Queen Mary versus SS Poseidon video that you were a part of. Thanks. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, Ivan says, are you planning to visit the Spruce Goose in 2023? I haven't made any plans, but I don't see why not. Um, you know, it, I live so close to the Spruce Goose. It's, it's like silly. It's like I live so close to it. So, um, yeah, I can see myself going there a couple times this year. Um, but yeah, I, I don't currently have any plans to go there. Actually, I do have plans to go back to the Tillamook Cheese Factory with my dad. And then probably see some some things along the coast like the um like cannon beach and stuff like that so yeah my dad really wants to see the tillamook cheese factory because growing up me and my dad really loved tillamook products so uh the fact that we live pretty close to tillamook factory is 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 nice Kevin says, would you want to visit the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic in Halifax? Um, I don't know. Is, is there something, is there something that makes it 
worth the trip all the way to um to Halifax. I like visiting museums, but there's some museums that I wouldn't make a trip to go just there. You know, like because it's you know, some of them are really far or something like that. If I live locally to a museum, I'll go, you know, whenever. Because it's local, it's easy to get there, but Halifax is like 3,000 miles from me, so going all the way to Halifax just to see a museum, I don't know that I would ever do that. Lachlan says, I think it's great that the big rooms on the Queen Mary are preserved, but it's also sad that they have someone, they have some, somewhat lost their beauty because of the nice furniture that has been put in storage. Yeah, I agree. Those rooms, I've, I've had too many people that, that have told me, oh, I've been to the Queen Mary, I don't think it's beautiful, it's very dark and, you know, dirty and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't blame you for thinking that, but that's not how the ship originally looked. You know, the ship was beautiful. It was so brightly lit with these golden lights, and there was beautiful furniture all over the place that really made the spaces nice, you know? Like, it really, it really popped with the way it looked. And it's, you know, it's sad that most of the ship doesn't, they don't have any of its original furniture in use. You know, maybe one thing here or there, like, I've heard people who are in the stateroom cabins have said, oh, there's an original chair in here on occasion. But, you know, but in the big rooms, the big public rooms, they really need to be restored back to how they looked in the 1930s. I think that will make them really popular. Steve says that in the Queen Mary Tea Room, they did serve English afternoon tea, but not very Cunard-like. Yeah, I can see that. Rayanne, how's it going? Sorry I'm late, but happy to be here now. It's good to have you. Carter says, wait, do you live in Clydebank? No, I live in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> um, Chris says, hey, Alex, do you think that Hollywood would be interested in filming my modern-day clone copy of RMS Britannic 2 if I was extremely wealthy rich? Maybe, yeah. Probably. A lot of, peop a lot of wealthy people's houses and stuff get filmed, so I don't see why not. Um, Carter Asher says, look up Titanic Museum in Oregon. I don't think there is one. Carter Asher says, I can't find your video of the Queen Mary in 2019. Yeah, I didn't go to the Queen Mary in 2019. I never made videos about Queen Mary in 2019. I didn't start making videos about Queen Mary until 2021, so... Um, Dino says, hey from Nashville. Hello! Chris says, airplanes are not very nice. I would rather be on board a train or an ocean liner. Yeah, I don't really like airplanes either. I don't like how uncomfortable they are and stuff.
Lachlan says, did you know when Queen Elizabeth II passed away, on the staff on the Queen Mary, went to the forward mast, took down the USA flag, and raised the British flag to half-mast in mark of respect. Really? There's no USA flag on the Queen Mary. Yeah, there's no there's no USA flag on the Queen Mary. I don't know what you mean. Ocean Liner Productions, yeah, I agree with you. The Queen Mary was absolutely beautiful. Ratupia says, what is your preferred form of transport, ship or train? Well, I mean... There are two different things. I mean, you, you take a ship to get across the ocean, but you can't take a train to get across the ocean. Um, well, I mean... <laughs> no, that's... That's, um... Splitting hairs, but... Yeah, you can't take a train across the ocean, so I can't choose between the two because they're two very different things. You would need... You would need both, you know, to get across areas... I don't know what I'm trying to say. I can't choose between the two. Um... Keeper says, hey, Alex, what is your opinion on the SS United States? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's a ship that has, you know, made a great achievement of, you know, getting the blue ribbon and, you know, and it was a very fireproof ship. But I personally am not very much a fan of the SS United States. I don't think it's very nice looking, not the exterior nor the interiors. Um... Yeah, I don't, uh, there's not really anything about the SS United States that appeals to me, or any other U.S. ocean liner, because I know the United States line and other American ocean liners, none of them have appealed to me so far. Lockman says, I mean the American flag that is flying on the forward mast. Yeah, I don't know. I, to my memory, there is no U.S. flag up there. I don't know. And then the Queen Mary has been closed. You know, like, there's no staff on the ship. Like, there's no employees on the ship right now because it's it's been closed. So I don't know who would have been there <laughs> to do that when Queen Elizabeth II died. You know, she died uh, just last year, just a few months ago. I don't think there was even anybody there to even be on the ship to change the flag. You, are you thinking of the Queen Mary 2 that's, you know... But the Queen Mary 2 doesn't fly the U.S. flag. Well, no, it does sometimes. But is that what you're thinking of? The Queen Mary 2 or something? Because the original Queen Mary, there's... I find it... I don't know. I just It's hard to, to imagine that because there's... I don't remember there being a flag on the Queen Mary... On the... Original Queen Mary. Um, oh, there's a lot of comments all of a sudden. Doc says, Alex, I know you said you like museums since moving to Portland. Have you been to many? Are there any good art museums near you? I don't visit art museums very much. Um, if I do, it's gotta, it's gotta be classical art, but even then I almost never do. Um, yeah, I, I love classical art museums, but just not nearly as much as I like science and industry museums. Um, but I have been to a few museums here. I've been to the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum. I've been there twice because there's a lot to see. Um, I've been to... There's a museum here in Portland that I don't 
know the name of. It's a museum of science and industry, and it's it's initials uh, is the name, so they call it by its initials. I don't remember what it is, but I've been there. It was really crowded, and we didn't spend much time there, so I didn't get to see very much because it was really, really crowded. The line to see the museum was, I'm not even kidding, probably a mile long. I'm not even joking because the line zigzagged down this really long hallway that was a couple hundred feet long, and it zigzagged like 10 times down that hallway, and then it came out into the lobby where it zigzagged even more, and then the line was going out the door and then zigzagging outside. So it was that was probably like a mile long to see the museum. And so we were just like, we walked in the lobby and we were like, no. <laughs> so, um, what other museums? I've been to the Japanese Tea Garden. That's not necessarily a museum per se, but I mean, it's a museum of plants. So, um... I've been to I know I've been to a few places here and there. Off the top of my head, I just can't think of any, but but yeah, but there also there just isn't as much museums up here as there was like when I used to live in Southern California, like there was a lot of museums there. But up here, there just aren't as many. You have to travel farther distances to get to them. Um, Daniel says, Do you know if the first class pool on the Queen Mary was ever open to hotel guests in the early Long Beach years? No, it was never used by hotel guests, but it was open for them to tour. So as long as you paid for a tour, you could see it back then. Um, but no, it was never open for hotel guests. And the reason why is because it is a really historic and valuable room. <clears throat> it's not like a regular pool room made of cheap materials. It is made of really expensive, fine materials. And it's the materials are have proven to be irreplaceable because when they've tried to replace broken tiles and things like that, they could never find the quality that the original tiles were. So, yeah. I mean, we're talking, you know, just some unique architecture in there. So, no, they, they knew from the very beginning when the Queen Mary became a hotel that they couldn't use the pool as a hotel pool. Um... What I do think is that they should have rebuilt the second class pool to be a hotel pool. I think that could have worked much better because that room wasn't full of expensive materials and it wasn't particularly beautiful. Um, it was okay, but it wasn't particularly beautiful. So the second class pool could have worked very well as a hotel pool, but first class pool, I don't think so. Um... Tyler. Yeah, I think he was talking about Queen Mary, too, because I was trying to think, I'm like, the original Queen Mary, and, like, I don't even think it has a U.S. flag on it. Like, even the signal flags, which they used to fly on the front of the Queen Mary, uh, you know, as she sits in Long Beach, I don't even think they've had those up recently. They've taken them down. There was a hair in my cup, and this is not my hair. <laughs> like, what in the world? Ugh. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> time to refill. I always find the grossest things in my food. Like, did I ever tell you guys, like, when I eat food, I find things like stones and bones in my food. So if I'm eating, like, a bean burrito, I'll find a little pebble in the burrito. I'm not talking about, like, an uncooked bean or something, because, you know, if you don't soak them properly, they might become kind of crunchy. This wasn't... This was literally a pebble. And, um... So I find that sometimes, but then when I eat like meats like sausages it could be any type of sausage if i eat that a lot of times i'll find bones in them and people don't like believe me how often i find bones in my food like even not even just like sausages either sometimes if i'm just like eating like ground beef or something there'll be a bone in there and most people have never experienced this before they're like what like they it, the, the process for making these things are usually so, you know, so well done that you you couldn't find bones in them. But I do. And I found a very big bone last night when I was having, um, I was eating <clears throat> an andouille sausage, which is a type of New Orleans Creole southern kind of sausage. I found a large bone in there, and I thought it was my tooth. I thought like, oh my gosh, somehow a, one of my teeth came out and I spat out the bone and I realized that it's not my tooth, that's just a bone. So, yeah, I was pretty flabbergasted by that. Uh, all right. Hello, Jay. Chris says, hey, Alex, would you ever visit Chernobyl? Because it's related to steam history. Nuclear reactors, heat water, and the steam... I know, but... That's not what I mean by steam history. And no, I would never go to a... To a place like Chernobyl. No. Lachlan says, my grandfather said that when he was going to Australia from Southampton on the SS Moreton Bay, the ship docked where the Queen Mary had to dock, and the captain of the Queen Mary told to move his... was told to... wait. And the captain, Queen Mary, told to move his scrap out of the way. Was he referring to the Moreton Bay as scrap or the Queen Mary as scrap? I'm confused. Dina says, which do you enjoy more, planning and working on your train setup or enjoying the complete setup when you finish the work? I would say enjoying the complete setup when it's all done. <clears throat> I actually don't enjoy the process of building models. I build them because I really want the model. I really want what's there. Um, and the only way to, to do it is build it myself. For instance... <clears throat> Uh, after this live stream, I have to go check the mail because I ordered a brand new caboose for the train set. Now, this caboose is a kit, so I have to build it myself. And normally I would not want to build a model kit. I mean, I can. I know how. But I don't want to. But the thing is, is that this caboose is not available otherwise. If you want this caboose, you have to build the model. And so that's the same thing for the train layout. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to have a train layout. I've built three so far, including this one. Um, 
But the thing is, is if you want a train layout, you have to build it. And so um, that's how it is for me. I don't really enjoy the building process, but I do it because it has to be done. <clears throat> But I guess there is one positive to building everything yourself, which is when people look at the train layout, um, they are surprised. Like, you know, me and my dad have been building all this stuff from scratch. So, you know, it's kind of cool to be able to say that, you know, it was all built from scratch by our hands, you know. Wow, Tyler, that... You broke a tooth. Wow, jeez. It's a crazy story. I'm really lucky that I've never broke a tooth, but... When I was a teenager... I was talking to somebody, and I was eating something. And I guess... I wasn't paying attention. And the front of my teeth bit down on a fork... And I chipped one of my lower teeth. And to this day, that tooth is still chipped. It's not terrible. Like, it's not terribly noticeable, but... On occasion... <laughs> on occasion, I'll feel it if I drink water or breathe, you know? <laughs> Sometimes I'll feel like the tooth is really sensitive because of that area that got chipped off. Ocean Liner Production says, When Queen Mary went to New York for troop transport conversions, a deck was added on top of the dining room aft. Or, or, or a deck was added on top of the dining room aft. Why wasn't it removed? And what was it used for during the war? A deck was added on top of the dining room in the aft section. I don't, uh... I think you're thinking of a different ship. I don't think Queen Mary ever had a deck added on top of the dining room aft. And even then, the dining rooms... <clears throat> the dining rooms are located deep in the ship on our deck. So, you can't add a deck on top of it because there is a deck on top of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's B deck, and then A deck, and then, you know, main deck. So, yeah, I don't... I don't... You'll, you might have to be more specific if you're talking about something different. But from my understanding, they didn't add a deck on top of the Queen Mary above the dining room aft. Because the dining room aft is deep in the ship. So I don't know what you mean. So if you could rephrase it or something... Bullgator Keeper says, Did I just see a train behind Alex? Yeah, the train's been running this whole time. Lachlan says, Do you believe in ghosts or spirits? Yesterday my cupboard door slammed closed. I'm about 50-50 in belief in them. Cupboard doors can slam closed just from wind or gravity or, you know... If the hinges on a door, not even just a cupboard door, but a door, if they're not aligned properly, it can make a door swing shut or swing open. But as for your question, do I believe in ghosts or spirits? I do. I don't think they're like traditionally ghosts or spirits like like people say, like, you know, heaven versus hell. Like, I don't believe ghosts are necessarily like a spirit. I think ghosts might be some kind of residual energy that we can't explain. 
Maybe something that has to do with the multiple dimensions that scientists are currently researching. I don't know. You know, I often quote this, but the sci scientists were monitoring two pieces of dark matter, like two particles of dark matter. And they were both behaving exactly the same, identically. All of a sudden, one of them started disappearing and then reappearing and then disappearing and then reappearing. And the scientists didn't know where that particle was going. How can a particle suddenly disappear and then come back into existence? It didn't make sense to them. But they kept watching it. And what they noticed is that every time the particle disappeared, the other particle was still moving around in the same way that it was before. So what they were theorizing, because I don't think they've come up to a conclusion yet, unless I haven't, unless I missed something, but what they were theorizing at the time was that the particle that was disappearing was going in and out of our dimension. And the other particle that was behaving identically to, to that one was still showing some kind of connection between our dimension and the next one. So they think that if the other one went to another dimension, it didn't just suddenly stop moving or stop existing. It was still behaving the same way as the one that was still in our dimension. I think that there might be something along the lines of that going on when it comes to spirits and ghosts. But I don't believe every place that claims it's haunted is is haunted, you know? I've been to places that should be considered super haunted and it's just not, you know? Some people say the Queen Mary's haunted. I've got friends who will swear up and down that the ship is haunted. And I do think that it may be haunted in certain respects, but it's certainly not haunted by those big fake stories that Disney made up in 1989. The stories of the girl that drowned in the pool and the story of the lady in white and all that stuff. Like the guy who murdered his family. None of those stories are true. They've been proven wrong. <laughs> um, you know, but if someone will say, all right, well, I heard a voice or someone tapped me on the shoulder or someone jiggled the door handle. Okay. Those I can believe as being a ghost entity, but the really crazy stories like, oh, the ghost of this sailor came into my room and was strangling me at night. I'm like, that's not real, you know? So yeah, it's things like that. I can be pretty skeptical about ghost stories. Honestly, I, I, I already am. I'm pretty skeptical. But, um... But, I mean, I, you know, I, I have experienced ghost activity in the past, which is why I find it hard to disprove ghosts. Because I've experienced some things that, you know, even with my skeptical mind, I cannot explain. And I used to be a, a maintenance guy. I'm a very smart person. I know how stuff works. I know how, you know, how sound waves and, you know, and electronic devices can affect your mind. And you can think of, you can think you see things that aren't there, you know. You know, for instance, when a microwave is running, did you know that it does emit a type of wave that makes you think you see things? Um, not everyone experiences it, but it does happen and it's been proven. But, um, you know but it's just the effect of running the microwave. So um, there's things like that, but there are some things where I'm just like, I don't know if I have an explanation for that, you know? Um, all right, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Or Tupia says, would you go to the USS Iowa, a double visit when you go to Queen Mary? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like, before I moved into, um, before I moved into this studio apartment, I was renting a room for my sister in her apartment. 
and we had moved up here um, in early 2020. And the three of us, and not just one of us, the three of us were each experiencing weird things that we couldn't explain. And we didn't tell each other because we, we <laughs> the, the funny part about it was we all thought we were crazy. So we didn't want to like tell each other like, oh, I thought I just saw somebody or something like that. We experienced all kinds of weird stuff in her apartment. And um, some of the some of the stuff was pretty scary, but I think only scary because it was just surprising. <clears throat> but finally, one day I was talking to my brother-in-law and I was like, yeah, I've been seeing this stuff and that stuff. And he's like, no way, I've been seeing that stuff too. And like just weird stuff and just completely unexplainable things. You know, and especially at night, there would be a man standing in the living room wearing, like, a black suit. Just everything all black, but nicely tailored and everything like that. Very, very tall. Um, you know, his, his head was pretty close to the ceiling. So it was really scary at times to see that in the distance. And I would see it, and I found out that my brother-in-law would see that. And it was kind of weird that we both saw the same things at different times. Um, but later I had found out that that uh, in the apartment below us, there was a man who had died, a young man. And he was, I, I don't want to say too much because I don't want people to start looking it up and then bother the family. But there was a man, young man, who was in... He, his job required him to wear suits, basically. So he was a businessman. And he had died just, I want to say, what was it? Yeah, he died three weeks before we moved into the apartment. And he was in the apartment below us. And his bedroom was below my bedroom. So, yeah, pretty weird. Um... And when I looked up an, a picture of him, I showed him to my sister and my brother-in-law, and they were like, oh my gosh, that's him. That's the person we've been seeing in our apartment. We had no clue, no clue at all that anyone had died. The person we saw in our apartment happened to be that guy. How is that possible? There's, we didn't even know. So I found that out, and... Yeah, uh, my sister, though, hadn't seen that figure as much as we did. She almost didn't even... She had seen it so few times that she really just didn't believe it. But it was after I moved out that she was cooking dinner in her kitchen. She had closed the oven door, and in the corner of her eyes, she, she saw somebody walking down the hallway. She got up and turned just in time to see the back of the person kind of disappear into the hallway... And she thought that was her her husband, you know? So she was like, oh, that's weird. What's he doing, you know, dressed up in a suit or whatever? So she, she went around out of the kitchen to go follow him and noticed that when she went into the living room, her husband was not dressed in a suit. He was asleep on the couch, just wearing comfor comfortable clothes. And so she went into the hallway just in time to see that suited figure walking into what was my old room she saw him walk in there and she went into the room and turned on the lights and there was nobody there that's when <laughs> that's when she told me she's like okay now i believe it you know because she was just like you know it had totally caught her off guard so yeah there's some there's some weird things um Ozzy, thank you so much for joining the channel. I'm trying to scroll back up to where I was, because now I want to try to read more comments. Doc says, I know you love trains. Sometime, if you get the chance, you can spend the night 
in the Chattanooga Choo Choo Train. It's been made into a hotel. I think I've heard of that, yeah. Blue Ribbon Productions says, Oceanliner Productions, there wasn't a deck added within the first class dining room. Hello, Brian Rock Rail fan. Sorry, I'm just reading comments and I'm picking ones that I think I can answer. Um, um, Jay says, what did the third class of the Queen Mary meals wear? What? Oh, I think you're saying, where did the third class eat meals on the Queen Mary? So they had... Um, they had, the third class had their own dining room forward on our deck. So it's actually forward of the first class swimming pool on our deck. And um, it was a dining room, I think it, I forget the capacity. Yeah, I forget the capacity. I think it was 300 people. Um, and yeah, um, they had their own pantry there so they could prepare foods for third class there. They also had their own kosher pan pantry for third class as well. So if you were a Jewish passenger in third class, you had your own, you know, your own uh, uh, kosher food and stuff like that. So yeah, they had a third class dining room forward on our deck. Good morning to you, Hapa. Oh, he says, do you believe in possession? I don't believe in possession. I really don't. Yeah, I, I think it's... I have never seen a case where possession seemed realistic to me. Ozzy says, are you going to get any snow? Um, no. So far on the forecast, there's no snow. Which is kind of sad, because, you know, late January is when we normally get snow. These, these biscuits are literally crumbling apart in my hands. They're so damaged from when they got shipped here. Ken says, this is interesting. Ken says, what nobody talks about is how much riveted hull ships creak and groan even when not moving. Personally, I think that can explain some of Queen Mary's haunting or general creepiness. I was stationed on a ship briefly, uh, or on a ship built in 1941 that had, riv that had a riveted hull and can attest to what I just said. Yeah, I would have to agree with Ken as well. I've heard a lot of people talk about the the weird noises on Queen Mary. Like, if you watch... If you watch videos of people who do paranormal investigations on the Queen Mary, a lot of them say, oh, you can hear, you know, workers tapping on the ship at night when there's nobody, you know, nobody working on the ship. 
it's not... <laughs> that's the ship creaking. You know, it is a riveted hull ship. It creaks, you know. And even though it's... It, it, it will creak even when the ship is not, like, rolling and rocking. It just creaks from just being old, you know. Like, it just creaks, you know. The expanding and contracting of metals. The, the, the rise and fall of the tide. You know, the ship... <coughs> Sorry, there's, like... The biscuit's really powdery. It gets in my throat. Um, the, um, the ship is not sitting on concrete blocks or anything. Like, a lot of people will say it is. It's not. It really is floating in the water. And the ship will rise and fall with the tide. And because of that, they have special bumpers along the Queen Mary that allows her to, to rise up and down. Those bumpers, as what you know, my friend Steve described, ha basically has a, a tree log, like a you know giant tree log that rolls with the ship, so that way it can help you know buffer the two things, and uh, that will make noise as the ship rises and falls with the tide. It's very slow, so the noise is very you know it's not constant, but yeah, that's one of the things. Some people will go to to um they'll go over to watertight door 13 supposedly where john petter died um although there's a there's a distinction between like either john petter didn't die at that watertight door or if i have it correctly the door wasn't labeled 13 when he died john petter did die though um but they say, like, oh, if you stand by watertight door 13, you can hear him hammering on the bulkhead. And it's like, no, that's the ship creaking, <laughs> you know? So there's things like that. You know, I am skeptical first when I hear a ghost story. But that doesn't mean I don't believe in them, because I feel like I've seen and experienced ghosts before. Hapa says, your documentary about the Disneyland Railroad is amazing. I really admire the way you tell stories. Thank you. I try to do something a bit unique, you know? Sniper Goofy says, I subscribed. Question mark. Um... Well, thank you for subscribing. I don't know what the question mark means, but <laughs> but thank you for subscribing. Ocean Line Production says, let me put it this way. There is a building under the aft mast. What? There is a building under the aft mast. During the conversion, there was some deck added on top. Originally one deck high. I see what you're talking about. Okay. Ocean Liner Productions, that, okay, so what Ocean Liner Productions is talking about is above the Veranda Grill restaurant, It there used to just be a roof, right, and it was available for the engine room crews to be able to go up there and get some fresh air, smoke some cigarettes, whatever, and that was on the roof of the Veranda Grill. Um, <clears throat> and that was just below the aft mast. But after the war, in it, during the conversion from troop ship to passenger ship, um, they had added an extra level up there. So they created an extra deck. And that was not because of the war effort. That was a completely different thing. That extra deck housed the, the um, cabins for... The engine room engineers. And the reason why they did that was because... After the war, there was a lot of... There was a lot of... Um, what do you call it? Strikes and things, because... The living conditions of people who worked in the boiler and engine rooms were not very good. You know, when you think about it... Traditionally, they would work in those engine rooms and boiler rooms all day or all night no you know daylight available 
then their cabins were usually located below the waterline or at the waterline of the ship, which meant that you pretty much didn't get a view out of your porthole if you had one. And that's if you had one. Um, so a lot of times they slept in cabins that just didn't have any access to daylight. So that can that that is not a very good job. You never you almost never get to see the daylight unless you came up to the very top to smoke a cigarette or something. So in an effort to appease the engine room crews of the Queen Mary, Kinnard had installed cabins up there above the veranda grill which had beautiful views of the ocean if you would look through the portholes out of them. But yeah, that is why. And so it was to just kind of appease them. And it stayed that way. And then after the ship came to Long Beach, those rooms were gutted and t eventually turned into Sir Winston's restaurant, which we have today on the Queen Mary. So that is why, yeah. <clears throat> Kintaya Polk, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Do you know what happened to the Titanic? She is my favorite ship. Yeah, the... I, I feel like that's a trick question. <laughs> the Titanic was on its maiden voyage, struck an iceberg, and sank on April 15th, the morning of April 15th, 1912. I feel like that's a trick question. What do you... <laughs> Um, Matt says, Alex, what are your thoughts about the SS America class super ocean liners designed by Germany, AKA America and Victoria? I don't know them. I don't know those ships. Yeah. Sniper says the question mark means I got confused. I see. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Tyler says, Alex, how would you feel if someone said that the boiler room crew didn't look any different than zombies? Uh, I know that they probably felt like zombies sometimes, because they were probably very tired. They had very rigorous work to do. Although on the Queen Mary, it wasn't, it wasn't so much physically demanding as it would have been on other ships like Titanic, for instance. You know, the, the coal-fired ships required a lot of coal shoveling, but oil-fired ships like the Queen Mary, it didn't require as much physically demanding work. I mean, you still had to climb a bunch of ladders and things like that to get around the engine room, crawl into tight spaces and things like that. But there wasn't as much physically demanding work. But nevertheless, it was, it was long hours. I mean, if I remember correctly... No, yeah, I don't think I remember correctly. But yeah, it was long hours. It was still a difficult job to do. But, yeah, I mean, I guess you could describe them as zombies like that. I mean, I felt like that when I worked for Disney. Um, Hawkman says, my grandparents went to England, and there were some Americans on the bus, and they went to Windsor Castle, and Americans said, why did... They build Windsor Castle so close to the airport. <laughs> yeah, that's... That does not represent every American, folks, just to let you know. Most of us know the difference between, you know, the age of a castle versus the age of an airport. Those had to be very, very simple folks. Um... Right. 
so I got through everybody's comments. That's something that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Usually I can't keep up with the comments. So my next video that's coming out, hopefully will be Friday, and that'll be about the rise of the steam turbine engine on ships. So it'll talk about why and exactly the specific reasons behind why ships went from having reciprocating engines to steam turbines and how it affected things. It'll be very interesting. I know a lot of you will probably be like, oh, I already know why. Of course, we all know why. But there's very specific things that I think need to be said. And so that's what the video will be about. That'll be this Friday or Saturday if I have to push it, you know, because sometimes I feel like I don't have time to work on videos. Um, but, yeah. And then next week will be a video about the history of the Forney steam locomotive. So if you're a fan of trains, there will be a video about the history of the Forney steam locomotive, which is my favorite type of steam locomotive. Mike says, train is making noises. Um, actually, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I don't know what you're hearing, but it's not the train. I mean, it is rolling down the rails, and it, it will make noise as it rolls down the rails. But the but the locomotive itself is not making noises, so. If it was, I'd be concerned. I'd probably stop, stop it and then open it up later and see what's wrong with it. But it's not making any noises. I was going to actually use the Forney engine today. I was going to use a completely different train. I was going to pull out the freight train, hook it up to the Forney, and have it go around the track today. But as you saw, I was running late for the live stream, and I, I still needed to oil the Forney engine. I still needed to get everything all set up, so I was just like, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to deal with it. Um... Shibbert says, where did you work at Disney? I worked at Disneyland Resort um, in California. I worked in both parks at multiple departments over the years. So I worked for Disney for a total of six years, and I changed departments periodically doing different jobs. So I started off working as a busboy, and I was cleaning tables at restaurants in Frontierland, including the Golden Horseshoe. Um... And then as I, you know, I got kind of bored being at the same exact restaurant every single day. So I was able to get managers across the, across the park and across the second park to sign off on my training for other restaurants around the resort. So basically what that means is one day I could be scheduled for Frontierland, but the next day I could be scheduled for Critter Country or Tomorrowland or, you know, or uh, the Pacific Wharf land in California Adventure. So I did all kinds of restaurants. And then eventually, because of my knowledge of Disneyland history, just stuff I learned over the last two decades, um, I was able to get into the guest relations department. I made it up to being a tour guide for Disney. In guest relations department, we didn't just do tours. We also handled VIPs and did VIP um, what do you call it? Um, VIP events. We also did the lost and found and the information booths around the parks. So I did lots of different things. I briefly worked in attractions for like a week working on the Indiana Jones adventure. Did not like working there. So I went back to foods and then I eventually went to culinary school and as I was going to culinary school, I moved into being a cook at the Blue Bayou restaurant 
uh, for Pirates of the Caribbean. And then I also did a few shifts working as a cook for the famous or possibly infamous Club 33 restaurant, which is available to the rich and famous. So I did lots of stuff for Disney. It is a very long, it was very long six years. I'll put it that way. Um, all right, let's see. Lachlan says, I think that the long gallery on the Queen Mary should be restored because then you can walk from main lounge to the gallery to the observation bar. I agree wholeheartedly. I think they should restore the long gallery on the Queen Mary. You can go even farther than the main lounge, too. That's the thing, is because the main lounge is on the other side of the main hall. So if you actually, if you actually like put the long the long gallery back in the ship, you can go from the first class smoking room to the long gallery to the first class main lounge to the main hall to the observation bar. That's almost the entire length of promenade deck. So that is a like awesome thing that you could do if they would just rebuild the long gallery. I don't think that they will though. So, um Glamorous Titanic says, Alex, what if White Star had survived the Great Depression? Do you think they could have survived till today in what form of any if if any? Um If they had survived the Great Depression, they probably would not have survived the end of the Ocean Liner era, which was in the 60s. So, I think if they had been as lucky as Cunard to survive that era, they probably would have had to switch to becoming a cruise ship company the way the Holland America line did. Um, because I think that's really the only way most of those companies would have survived. I mean, Kennard even became a cruise ship company as well. They still have an ocean liner, but they're still a cruise ship company. So I would say that's how it would have happened. K4RNA, thank you so much for the donation. Hey, Alex, I see the train running. So here is some fuel. <laughs> Hello to everyone. Thank you so much, K4RNA. Yep, the train layout is certainly coming along nicely. Pretty soon I'll be I'll be able to start painting it so it'll actually have like, you know, some definition and stuff. It'll look like a like a train layout. So, um Daniel says, "Hey Alex, what is your favorite chocolate brand?" Mine is Ferrero Rocher. Um my favorite chocolate brand Would probably have to be Ghirardelli, to be totally honest. I've always been faithful to the Ghirardelli company. But that being said, on occasion, there are other companies that produce really good chocolate. There, there was one that I used to buy chocolate from them all the time, but it was really, really expensive. And I don't remember what it was. They went out of business, actually. They used to be located in Orange County. I don't even remember the name anymore. But uh, they went out of business because of the pandemic. But yeah, they had great chocolate. And when I owned my cafe, we used to purchase um, chocolates from them to sell at my cafe. And we also made our mochas out of the chocolate um, co uh, the chocolate cocoa powders that uh, they sold. But I don't, yeah, I don't remember their name anymore. It's been so long. Um, <sighs> Chris says, my favorite steam locomotive would have to be the Union Pacific Big Boy locomotives, also the classic 440 locomotive. 
I'm glad for someone to finally say 440. I feel like the 440 just doesn't get any love anymore. You know? Um, Mike says, I hear clicking noises. Maybe it's something else. The clicking noises are the train wheels rolling over the switch tracks. That's a totally normal sound. Um, the the switch tracks have what's called a frog in them. So the cars have to cross over the gap of the frog. And so that's what makes that noise. It happens in real life, too, on actual trains. If you stand near a switch track, as the train rolls over the switch track frog, it'll make that same clicking noise, although it's much louder on, a, of course, a really big train. But yeah, that's a totally normal sound. Um... Lachlan says, imagine if the Yarrow project happens. That would be so exciting, but also very expensive. It would be well worth the effort. Yes, it certainly would be. Shibbert says, what's your favorite place to visit on the Queen Mary? Hmm. That's a really complex question, and the reason why is because I've visited the Queen Mary a few times in my life, but I've only appreciated it once, and that was the last time I visited the ship in January of 2020. Um, and that's because it wasn't until that final visit that something clicked, and all of a sudden I fell in love with the ship. There was just something about it that caught my attention now that I was like an adult. Um, cause the last time I had seen the ship before that, I was a teenager and before that I was a little kid. So yeah, but, uh, the last time I saw the ship in January, 2020, I was a full grown adult and all of a sudden I just loved the ship. The problem was, was that when I visited the ship on, in January, 2020, I did not see everything. I didn't even see close to everything. So there are rooms on the ship that I think I would have loved to see had I seen them. <laughs> One of those would be the first class main lounge, um, the second class main lounge, um, I would have liked to explore more of the first class main restaurant, and had more, and I wish I had more time in the observation bar. So, I have not officially developed a favorite place to visit because I'd only appreciated it once. But if I did go there and I had the ability to visit multiple places, I think possibly one of my favorite places to visit would probably be either the first class main lounge or the second class main lounge. But even then, the second class main lounge is almost very rarely open. It's almost always locked, from what I've heard. Like, people can't get in there. Sometimes it's open, but yeah, it's. Yeah. So that's why it's kind of a complex question. Um, Chris says Hey, Alex, do you like the locomotive in the TV show Pedcoat Junction? I don't know that TV show. Historic Production says, is the giant Lego version of the Queen Mary still there? Technically, yes, but when I was there in 2020, I was there on a weekend, which you'd think a weekend is your busiest, most successful days of the week. So you'd think that it would be open to visit. But when I went there, the Lego Queen Mary was not open to visit. I asked one of the crew members of the ship, and he told me that... Uh, there just wasn't anybody to staff the room, so they closed it that day. So, that's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I mean, technically it's still there. Um, Ken says, have you ever been inside Club 33? Um... Technically, I worked in the kitchen, but I've never been inside the club. So I've, I've worked in the kitchen of Club 33, but never been inside the club itself. Um, so, you know, I they 
I was working Blue Bayou that day, and um, I remember the chef of Club 33 came down to Blue Bayou and said, you know, we're already short-staffed. A few of our cooks called out, and so we don't have enough cooks to, to work today. They said to, the, to my chef, they said, do you have anybody who's qualified to work in Club 33? The chef immediately said, the only person here who is qualified to work up there is Alex. And he pointed to me, because I had been to culinary school. I have experienced cooking. So, you know, so immediately they were like, okay, Alex, you can go up there and cook for them. And I was like, that's cool. Um, so I ended up going up there and I was put on the seafood and chicken line. So basically I had my own set of stoves and stuff and it was specifically for cooking seafood and chicken. Um, and so that's what I did that day. And I was cooking a lot of salmon and I think there was some tilapia that day. Or it could have been another day there was tilapia because I was there a second time. And it was the same reason. A bunch of their people had called out. They couldn't afford to stay open if they didn't have a, you know, another cook. So they brought me back up there again. So and that, that's what you get for being a qualified cook. But, uh, and it's funny. I really liked working there that day. It was not very hard. I mean, it, the, the interesting thing about working at a fine dining, like an actual fine dining restaurant, because I know people say, oh, well, Club Third, they would say Blue Bayou is a fine dining restaurant. Technically, yes, on paper it is, but in reality, it's not that fine dining. Um, but Club 33 is fine dining. And so when I went up to Club 33, it was very different, obviously. You know, Blue Bayou, they focus on speed. They're like, they're like look, it's, you know, you got to get the food out. And so, but at Club 33, it's like focus on taste and presentation, so the food had to be made perfectly. The presentation had to be spot on. That's what I was qualified for. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, the second class main lounge should be restored. You know, honestly, the second class main lounge doesn't really need that much restoration. It already looks the way it did way back when. In fact, I would almost venture to say the second class main lounge is probably one of the most preserved rooms on the entire ship. Because honestly, the only thing it's missing is its furniture. Otherwise, everything's there, you know, everything. The first class main lounge isn't because even if you brought the furniture back, it's still missing certain things. It's still missing you know, it's little statuettes, it's missing the light fixtures that used to light up the whole room, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, and then the wall paneling in the main lounge and some of the artwork needs to be refurbished. But the second class main lounge, there really doesn't need to be that much done. It's It almost looks as it did way back when. That's why I really want to go see the second class main lounge when I visit the Queen Mary so I can film it on video because it would make for a lot of good videos. Um, yeah, Steve from Blue Ribbon Productions says, stay tuned to Alex's channel for some upcoming videos related to the Yarrow Project. Yes. I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to like be too... But yeah, um, I will have some content for you guys to see about the Yarrow Project and um, together you know Steve and, and uh, Robin Jacobs and me will be uh, releasing information as we know it so yeah um, Lachlan says, the thing about second and third class on Queen Mary is that they were not overwhelmingly luxurious. They were simple, but still really nice. They were just nice. Yeah, I mean, honestly, but when you think about it, in the 1930s, second and third class on Queen Mary 
was miles better than it would be on other ships. Um, you know, when you compare third class on Normandy to third class on Queen Mary, it was like night and day. Queen Mary's third class just, they got a lot more out of it, you know? Um, yeah. But I mean, you also have to remember too that, you know, back then, third class was just, it wasn't usually the main focus of a ship. But on Queen Mary, it was put more in focus than other ships did. So, pretty interesting that way. Steve says, I had dinner at Club 33 once for my birthday in 1997. It was strange to drink alcohol inside a Disneyland park. Yeah. Ocean Liner Production says, Why are Queen Mary's funnels different heights? Um... So, it all has to do with aerodynamics, but basically they discovered that by putting the three funnels at different heights, they were better able to move the smoke away from the upper levels of the ship. So, it, it's there's more complex, um, there's a more complex answer behind it. But we would literally be getting into like the concepts of aerodynamics and how, you know, how the flow of air and all that works. And it's just, it's a lot. So just trust me when I say it has to do with aerodynamics. Um, also, the way the ship moves in the water, it's another part of aerodynamics. So it's not just about moving smoke away from the ship, but also helping the ship to move through the water faster by reducing aerodynamics on the ship or reducing aerodynamic forces against the ship. So it's things like that. It's pretty complex stuff that I would need to have a script in front of me to be able to properly speak to you guys. But but yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the funny thing is, and Steve, since you're here, maybe you can help me out. A lot of people say that the replica funnels that are on the Queen Mary today are like seven feet shorter than the originals were. Now... I really looked into this, and I do not see a difference in height. I don't see it. And then I thought, well, maybe it's maybe it's just hard to tell because it's only seven feet. But then I thought, okay, then why is it only seven feet? Why did they reduce the height of the replica funnels by seven feet? So... I'm starting to wonder how legitimate that information is. So if you know anything about that, Steve, let me know, because I'm starting to question the legitimacy of when people say that the funnels are seven feet shorter than they originally were, because I don't, I'm starting to wonder if that's even true. Um, Ozzy says, Petticoat Junctions is related to Green Acres and the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, I didn't watch either of those shows. Um. Daniel says, hey, Alex, have you thought about making a tiny train wreck on the bottom of the trestle bridge in the railroad? If I did, that would require me buying... <laughs> train equipment to turn into a wreck and i'm not going to spend money on doing that if i had extra pieces that i couldn't use that were probably broken up and i couldn't use them yeah i'd turn them into a train wreck but i'm not gonna spend money to buy new pieces of rolling stock just to turn them into a train wreck so it's not gonna happen um Doc says, do they currently rent the Queen Mary out for weddings and dances? No, because the ship is not open yet. So it's, it's, they're doing the free tours that are all booked up, but the official, like the whole ship itself is not open to the public yet. They're saying maybe early March or late March, something like that. That's kind of the rumor right now. It's not an official date yet. Um, but 
when the ship was open, it was open for booking for weddings and dances. Although I think a lot of people might be a bit um, reluctant to book because people had booked in 2020 and the company that was operating the ship at the time did not refund people's weddings and bookings even after they went bankrupt. They kept it all. So I think a lot of people might be reluctant to book weddings and stuff on the Queen Mary for now. Um, Lachlan says, I wonder if they ever replicate the steam pipes on the funnels leading up to the whistles. Yeah, there's no steam pipes or anything leading up to the funnels. Um, it, there should be, honestly. Like, it, that should have been on their priority list for replication, but they didn't. But it would be nice if one day they could, you know, because, you know, the, the ship had pipes going up the funnels for various things. There was steam release pipes, and then there was also pipes that supplied steam to the whistles, stuff like that. So it, there should be, but... Um, Carter Asher says, do you have a Queen Elizabeth model? No, I don't even have a Queen Mary model. <laughs> yeah, there's... Nobody makes uh, modernly tooled, accurate models of the Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth. There is one company that does, but they're located in a different country, and their, their models are really expensive. And I'm not sure they're all that accurate either. So... Um, Mike says, isn't it amazing how small Olympic-class ships are compared to today's ships? Technology has come a long way. Certainly has. Steve says, haha, I've always heard the same thing about the funnels. Um, the explanation was that the funnels are 96% original dimensions, width and height, which was supposed to have been necessary for the new funnels. But I have never found any confirmation of this in writing or schematics. Rob has heard the same thing and has never seen any proof either. So see, there you go, you guys. The three of us, me, Steve, and Rob, we've researched this and have never found any proof that Queen Mary's funnels are actually shorter than they really were. And, you know, according to the rumor, it was necessary to make them shorter or smaller in some way, but... We've never found the reason, like what reason would there have been to make the funnels smaller? They don't look smaller. Like I have really compared images of Queen Mary from 1936 to modern Queen Mary and the funnels look the exact same height. I've never seen anything different. So it, I mean, yes, they are replica funnels today, but they're not shorter or anything like that than I can tell and there's no reason for them to be made shorter. So yeah. So if you hear that being told by people that the Queen Mary's funnels are shorter than they originally used to be, take that with a grain of salt. We don't know yet if that's even true. Um, Jay says, what was the gift shop like the last time you went? On the Queen Mary? I remember being very disappointed by Queen Mary's gift shops. There were, uh, there were several of them. The only gift shop that looked at all interesting to me was there was a small gift shop on A deck right near the purser's office, first class purser's office, um, which is today where you check in for your hotel rooms. So there's a little tiny gift shop there and they sold some teddy bears that were dressed like cabin stewards or something like that. Or, or even ship officers. They were cute little teddy bears. But aside from that, I didn't really see anything in any of the, of the Queen Mary's gift shops that appealed to me. They sold very, very 1990s types of stuff, like, like snow globes, pens, maps. Um, they had puzzles. I'm like, puzzles are great, but almost nobody plays with puzzles anymore. They had a few t-shirts and sweatshirts um but they were all very hokey kind of looking there was a lot of postcards postcards are awesome but this is 
you know, the 2020s, people don't send postcards anymore. So it's like, no one even collects them anymore. So it's like, postcards. Um, they didn't have anything I wanted. Like, I went there thinking, oh, I'm going to buy some replica dishware. Like, when I went to the... I went to a Titanic museum in the year 2012, and they had replica Titanic plates and stuff like that. I have one. I'm looking at it right now from across my living room. Uh, I have a replica first-class Titanic plate. So I thought, oh, maybe Queen Mary will have replica Queen Mary plates. Nope. I thought, maybe they'll have models of the Queen Mary that I can buy. Nope. They didn't have models of the Queen Mary. Maybe they'll have toys of the Queen Mary. Nope, no toys of the Queen Mary. They did have a paperweight of the Queen Mary, but it was very cheap looking. It didn't look like the Queen Mary, so I didn't buy it. Um, I thought maybe they might have replicas of 1930s clothing. No, not really. They had like scarves and hats, but nothing that looked that old. Um, they had a display showing... Um, traveling trunks that had the Queen Mary image on them, but when you went into the shop, they didn't have them in the shop. You couldn't buy them because they were, they've been out for a long time. So when I went to the Queen Mary's gift shops, I was very, 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 very disappointed. There was nothing there that I wanted to walk out with. I was looking for keychains even. They had keychains, but they were very hokey looking, just very 1990s cheesy looking. And I'm like, they didn't have anything interesting. You know, like, I don't know. It was like, even when they came close, it was just not quite on the mark. So, it was weird, you know. They sold little stuffed corgis of, like, you know, um, Queen Elizabeth II, she collected, you know, corgis. She, she raised corgis. So they had little corgis that you could buy, but I was like, I don't want a stuffed corgi, like, you know, I'm a 20-something-year-old man. Like, I don't need a little stuffed corgi. So, they didn't have anything I wanted. It was really disappointing. Yeah. Um. Carter says, go to Branson, Missouri and do a video at Titanic Museum. I am, again, I am not going to travel all the way to, like, a place like Missouri just to see a museum. I mean, I love museums, but if I'm in the area, I'll go see them, but I'm not going to travel, you know, thousands of miles just to visit a museum. I'm not going to do it. Plus, the Branson Museum looks kind of tacky as well. It looks like the kind of place that... I don't know. Like, it's meant for children. It doesn't look like it's meant for adults. So, yeah, I, I have no interest in going there. Um, Daniel says, hey, Alex, why does Aquitania look similar to the Olympic class liners? I wouldn't say that Aquitania looks similar to the Olympic class liners. I would say that Aquitania looks similar to all four funneled liners of the time. You got to remember there, it wasn't just Olympic class. There was also the Lusitania class ships. There was also, um... There was also uh, German ships and, you know, there was all kinds of ships that they all kind of looked the same at the time. But Aquitania looks more like Lusitania and Mauritania than it does Titanic or Olympic. So, yeah, I would have to, to differ from that, um, that point of view. Steve says, I won't say that it's not possible that the funnels are reduced size versions, but I will only believe it when I can get actual measurements of the replicas. Same here. Same here. I'll only believe it if I can get actual measurements. Or some kind of or some kind of correspondence that acts as proof that they were reduced in size. You know, like, I don't know, something from the mayor's office that said, please reduce the size of the funnels. I don't know. Like, I'll believe it then, but you know. Lachlan says, I like how they turned the first class library into a gift shop, but they kept the original bookshelves. It is nice that they didn't remove the bookshelves, but I think the first class library would do very well as a bookshop. 
So, you know, they could sell all kinds of books and stuff on the shelves. They could sell stationery and other things. You could buy, like, some Queen Mary Hotel stationery in the shop across the way. But I thought, that's weird. Why wouldn't you just sell stationery in the library? That makes sense there, you know? Yeah, it was just kind of weird, you know? I'm trying to think, but, but yeah, there's other things you could sell in the library, you know, like you could focus all of your paper products, everything from maps to, you know, to, to posters, books. Um, if you still wanted to sell postcards, then postcards, the postcards were also across the way again, kind of weird. Like you'd think they'd sell it in the library because it's a paper product and you're in the library, but they didn't do that. So, yeah, I think, like, if I was the one organizing the shops, I would sell all paper products in the library. The drawing room across the way is where I would sell home goods. You know, people want to buy stuff that is labeled Queen Mary. You know, people love to buy, like, kitchen sets. So, like, like plates and glasses. It doesn't even have to be original, like, looking. It can just be generic, like, home goods. But with the Queen Mary branding on it, people love to buy that stuff. Um, and so you could sell that in the drawing room. Because when you think about it, the drawing room was for, like, you know, people to sit, you know, drink a cup of tea, maybe write a few notes to, you know, to people when, you, when you're ready to send them out, you know, whatever. Like, letters and notes and things like that. Of course, you had the reading and writing room for that, but still. Um... You know, the drawing room was just a place to relax, so you might want to sell leisurely products in the drawing room today. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going to buy, like, a throw pillow with the Queen Mary on it, sell it in the drawing room, you know? That kind of thing. If you're going to sell, sell a blanket with the image of the Queen Mary on it, sell it in the drawing room, you know? So that's how I would order, like, that's how I would organize all that stuff. But yeah. Um, Doc says, that's sad that about the gift shop they need to sell tea for kiddos a little cunard mini service will be so awesome and models of the ship well i will say that what they did sell was they had little wooden boxes of english breakfast tea they called it queen mary tea it's not the same as the as like the cunard tea or whatever that you can get from cunard but it is um a, it's called queen mary tea and the box has a printed image of the rms queen mary it's um it's a drawing, but printed on. Um, and it looks really cool. I have, a, I have a, a box of it up on my shelf, but you guys can get it off of Amazon today, actually. So if you go to Amazon and you look up Queen Mary Tea, you'll see the little wooden box with the image of the Queen Mary on it. And inside the box is a bunch of, um, of um, uh, English breakfast tea that is in bags. And it's actually, it's, it's pretty decent. It's not the best, but it's pretty decent. And, uh, but the box is collectible. I, th I think it looks, looks great. And they sold that on the Queen Mary. Um, at the time, I didn't drink tea, though, so I didn't buy it. <laughs> now I drink tea. Um, let's see. But yeah, I agree. A Cunard mini service would be cool to sell. People would buy that, you know. Carter says, do filming locations on the Queen Mary like the Poseidon Adventure. Yeah, if I go there and I have the time to um, to film that stuff like that, I'm gonna be filming the entire ship, so it's possible I could actually cut up the 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 videos and turn that into its own video about filming locations. Um, we'll see. That's all part of the grand scheme. Um. <laughs> Steve says, when Garrison evicted all of the tenant-operated stores on board so they could have their own stores, the quality of the gift shops went downhill. I heard the same thing because I heard that that um, there was a time when the gift shops actually sold replicas of the souvenir Queen Mary tea sets. So, for those that don't know... The Queen Mary used to sell souvenir versions of these tea sets. 
and some of them had like roses and flowers on them and the original uh the original souvenir sets go for a lot of money these days but the queen mary in long beach used to sell replicas of the souvenir sets for cheaper so i heard they used to sell that on the queen mary but it's been decades since they did that Yeah, Urban Commons was even worse. Almost nothing on the ship was open when I went. Again, it was a weekend in 2020. Early 2020, before everything closed for the pandemic. This was January, when people still had their doubts about how bad COVID was going to be. Um, in fact, most people hadn't even heard of COVID in January. It, was, it really didn't get heard of until the beginning of March, when stuff started closing. But yeah, so we went there in on a weekend, January... 12th, I think. It was like one of the first weekends of January. Um, and almost nothing was open. All the major rooms on the ship, all the stuff that you see in the postcards and all that, was all locked up. You know, the the Lego Queen Mary exhibit was closed. They only had, they have, the ship has like four restaurants, right? It has the Observation Bar, the, ca the, the Promenade Cafe, the, um, Chelsea Chowder House and Sir Winston's. So four restaurants. Of the four restaurants, only one was open that day, and that was the Chelsea Chowder House. My my friend Chris was like, "Oh, we gotta get a, a, a seat at Sir Winston's." Wasn't open that day. A weekend wasn't open. So um. You know, so nothing was open that day. It was so disappointing. It's like, it, it's like if you were to write a book about how not to operate the Queen Mary. Do what Urban Commons did. So, uh, uh. Doc says, oh, I'm at tea set like little China ones kids have at tea parties with. Yeah, but wouldn't it be cool to have a miniature version of this tea set, but like the ones I described with like the souvenir set, which had all the flowers and stuff on it? Because, you know, this stuff, it's, I know it's cubist, you know, but with the flowers and stuff, it really does work for like a little girl's tea set and stuff like that. I think that'd be pretty cool if they sold a miniature version of all this um, for like children and stuff. That'd be good. But, um, but yeah, if it was just like a typical like standard like children's tea set that'd still be fun to sell on the queen mary um oh i didn't know the ss deutschland of 1900 had four funnels that's interesting Haley says i'm going to the titanic museum please come to tennessee <laughs> i have no reason to go to tennessee you know, it's again, it's one of those things where, like, I'm not going to travel thousands of miles just to see a museum, you know? Like, I need other things to do that, you know, will really take up my time. So, um, you know, like, when I go to the UK, it's not just for one thing. I'm going to be doing literally dozens of things there. I'm going to be seeing lots of stuff and videoing lots of things to make multiple videos for you guys to make the money worth it like make it pay itself off you know so the uk trip will cost a lot of money it'll cost about like eight thousand dollars but the hope is that the hope is that uh i can make about like 60 videos out of it and those videos will pay for themselves that's kind of the idea so Steve says the plastic versions sold as a child's tea set would be awesome. Yeah, it would be. I think so. Yeah. Doc says, so cool. They need to listen to your marketing feedback. I know. I mean, it's like I do have I do have some education in hospitality and tourism. I do kind of know what people want. You know, when I worked at Disney as a as a guest relations host. I didn't just do tours, I was also part of guest recovery. So the idea was we had to kind of know what people who visit the Disney parks want. But it wasn't just Disney parks. We had to know what people who who travel 
want. We want. We need to know what they want to buy, what they're interested in looking at, that kind of stuff. So that kind of knowledge stuck with me. So it's like I I know what tourists want, and I know that I could give some really good suggestions if there was someone out there with influence on the Queen Mary that would listen. I'd be happy to give it, you know. So. Yeah, I mean, I have all these ideas, tons of ideas on how to do very simple updates to the Queen Mary's um, exhibits, ways that are non-invasive to the exhibits. So that way they could be updated for modern audiences. And again, in a way that's non-invasive. So it doesn't, it doesn't affect the exhibit itself. It doesn't require, you know, millions of dollars or, or even thousands of dollars to, you know, do upgrades. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't change the value of the exhibit itself. You know, I got all these ideas, so. Um, uh, Haley says, so wish me much. So wish me much. Was this back in 2013? What? I don't know. I don't know what you're asking. <clears throat> Steve says, when Martha and Ernesto Chacon or Ch Chacon or... I don't know how to pronounce the name. Used to run the gift shops. They actually had Cunard souvenir items for sale, like posters, pins, and such. The same items sold on Queen Mary II, QE, and Queen Victoria. 2013 was when they were all evicted. Haley says, I was in Disney World in 2013. Oh, no. I was working at Disneyland in California. Um, and yeah, I was there in 2013 at Disneyland. Um, Doc says, Alex, I think adult coloring books are a big thing now. Many of my patients use them for anxiety, and I would love a Queen Mary coloring book. You know, I've thought about actually creating a adult coloring book for Queen Mary. I mean, I, adult in the sense that it's, you know, it's, it's for people of all ages, not just... Anyway, <laughs> just pretend you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I've thought about creating uh, a coloring book uh, because it's it's simple. You you draw the outline of everything, and someone else has to come in and color it. And I thought I could do that because I'm very good at drawing that kind of stuff. So that might be a product I'll eventually sell. You know, who knows? I I don't think it should be a a problem. Should be pretty easy. Yeah. I'll see if I can do that. That might be a product I can sell. Because I know there's lots of people that um, that color coloring books just for anxiety and stuff like that. Um, uh... Ah, um, Daniel says, hey, Alex, didn't Walt Disney, um, uh, ride aboard the Queen Mary, uh, in the, in the past, I'm guessing. Um, yes, he was a passenger on the Queen Mary for a few voyages. There are a few photos of him and his wife and stuff like that on board the Queen Mary throughout the years. So, um... I do believe the earliest photo of him on the Queen Mary was in the early 50s. And then one of the more recent ones was from the 60s. So yeah, he was a he was a passenger a few times aboard the Queen Mary. Um, and apparently he had a favorite seat <laughs> uh, it, the, the, in the Veranda Grill restaurant. So the Veranda Grill restaurant was a very exclusive restaurant aboard the Queen Mary very exclusive 
Um, and he had a, fa a favorite table, which was located on the starboard side of the Veranda Grill restaurant, looking out the windows. Steve says they should hire you and I as their gift shop operators. <laughs> I'd, I'd want to be something much more than a gift shop operator. But yes, if I was a gift shop operator, I would have the most successful gift shop aboard the Queen Mary. I'm not even kidding. It would be great stuff. Doc says, Alex, I would buy that as, as merch from you. You could sell it as a PDF. Yeah, but then I'd be worried about people, like, copying the PDF and then just giving it to other people for free. Um, if I was making it as free merchandise, then I, I guess I would do that, just for fun, you know. Lachlan says, I think some of the third-class public rooms should be restored. I agree 100%. There are a few rooms here and there that would not be difficult to restore, um, you know, the third class children's nursery, the, um, the, uh, the synagogue, which was also located in third class, could easily be restored. Um, the third class dining room would be harder to restore, but nevertheless would be an interesting thing to see. Um, and then... Just forward of the third class dining room, right at the base of the third class staircase, is the um, the third class entry, which is where third class came in. There was a purser's office and all that stuff. That could be restored pretty pretty easily, not you know, relatively speaking. So there are third class spaces I think that could be brought back quite easily, and some not as easily. And they should. They really should. I think people nowadays would really appreciate seeing more, more of the ocean liner than just first class. You know, in the 1970s, when they converted Queen Mary to a hotel, there was this idea that no one wants to see third class. No one wants to see second class. People want to see first class. Everybody wants to see first class. And that's true, but... Nowadays, decades later, long after ocean liners have pretty much gone the wayside, the idea of there being three classes, the idea of there being three different levels of service on a ship really intrigues us. And especially after seeing the movie Titanic and seeing the third class spaces aboard Titanic, you start to want to make comparisons with the Queen Mary. Maybe there aren't comparisons to be made, but... You want to make comparisons, so I think it would really work out well. <clears throat> Steve says, Disney and his wife first met Jack Rather and Bonita Granville aboard the Queen Mary on one of those crossings. I didn't know that. I knew that they were very good friends, and, you know, Jack Rather was invited by Walt Disney to build the Disneyland Hotel, so that way Disneyland had a hotel when it opened. Um, but I did not know that they literally met on the Queen Mary. That I did not know. That's pretty cool. Uh, but it makes sense, because Walt Disney and Jack Rather often traveled aboard the Queen Mary. So yeah, that makes sense. Chris says, Walt Disney is also from my hometown of Marsland, Missouri. Yes, indeed. Lachlan says, I'm not sure if you can still eat on the Veranda Grill in the Queen Mary. No, you can't. The Veranda Grill is kept as kind of a, a reserved space for tours. So when you go on a tour, they will often end in the Veranda Grill. Um, but uh, no, it's not available for eating. But the level above it uh, Sir Winston's is the new fine dining restaurant aboard the ship. My friend showed me... My friend was so excited about about Sir Winston's. And he said, let me show you the pictures of the food I got. And he showed me the pictures. And even he was like, I don't remember them looking this bad. And I'm like, yeah, the food does not look very good from Sir Winston's. I mean, it's edible, yes. But is it worth the price? I don't know. 
So, it's supposed to be fine dining, but it didn't look that fine dining. But then again, remember, this was under Urban Commons, and Urban Commons cut a lot of corners. So it possibly was very fine dining in the past, but... Yeah. Um, Marquette Productions says, Alex, what's your favorite Great Lakes shipwreck? I don't know any. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know any. Um, Lachlan says, it would also... Is it really 640? Oh my gosh. It's been two hours and 40 minutes. Jeez, I gotta end this live stream soon. I have n I didn't even realize it's been two hours and 40 minutes. Um, it'll be great. Wait, Lachlan says, it would also be great. The awful granite in the observation bar was removed. I don't understand why Disney brought granite tabletops into the ship. I'm trying to remember, but I don't remember there being granite. I might be not remembering it correctly, but I don't remember there being granite in the observation bar. Um, Matt G, thank you so much. Lachlan says, what made you start doing these live streams? The tea time streams? Um... I suppose I just, I wanted to create a live stream where I could talk about trains and ocean liners with the viewers. So, I don't know, I just kind of felt like there should be something where people can just relax, have some tea, and we can just talk about ocean liners and stuff like that, and, and just, and it would be like a relaxing environment where we could just talk, you know? Um, a lot of live streams they're not quite like this. A lot of live streams between the YouTuber and the audience is very much like a Q&A kind of thing, which, I mean, yes, I am answering a lot of questions, but as you can see, this is very different from other from what other people do. You know, you guys are seeing trains going around. You guys are, you know, seeing me use this old Kinnard tea set. So it's kind of like, you know, there's old music playing in the background. It's, you know, 1930s band music. So it's a very relaxing kind of thing. I wanted to recreate just the idea of having afternoon tea aboard an ocean liner. Granted, my apartment looks nothing like an ocean liner, but I figure if I could capture the essence of what afternoon tea is and bottle it into a live stream, then I figure that's, you know, what I wanted to do. And so, um, and I had already purchased a, a plate. I don't have it right here, but I had already at the time purchased a plate for the tea set. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to own the whole tea set someday. So I slowly gathered, you know, I slowly collected the tea set and everything piece by piece. And when I finally moved into this apartment last year, I was like, okay, let's have afternoon tea. And yeah, and I love doing these live streams. It's really cool. I get to talk to people. As you can see, it's been two hours and 45 minutes and I didn't even realize where the time went. I was having so much fun talking to you guys and just talking about ships and trains and stuff. And so, yeah, I love doing these things. And I think a lot of people, at first they're reserved about joining these live streams because they probably think that it's just something weird where you're just watching me drink tea, and it kind of is. But but when they join, they, they actually see it's kind of fun. Like, we just talk about trains and ships, and so it's just kind of fun. So, um, let's see. I'm trying to get through the last, the last, um, comments before we go. Um... Uh Okay, I'm I'm trying to go through the I'm trying to figure out where There was a Oh, I know why. I was trying to go back to where I was, but the comment that I was just answering disappeared. So I I, I was like looking for it and like I don't see it and it's gone. Um Ocean Liner Production says, if we could still see some of the rooms at their best like they were in 1936, 
she would be really successful. She would probably be called as the lu luxury Long Beach Palace. Yeah, I agree. If they had restored more of the Queen Mary's rooms, the big public spaces, and the hotel rooms to how they looked in the 1930s, I think people would understand why we call her beautiful. Because a lot of the stuff is very muddled now. You know, they've removed so much from the ship that there's old mixed with new and it just doesn't work well. And so some people look at that and they go, I don't understand why anybody could think this ship is that beautiful. But if you could recall what the ship looked like way back when, she did. She looked absolutely amazing. Um, Bloom Production says, is this a record yet? No, the record is three hours and 20 minutes. So, <laughs> so no, it's not a record yet. Um, Carter, why did they put red on, red on funnels, Cunard Red? That's a long story. I don't have time to answer it right here, but maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. Um, Steve says, yeah, black granite bar tops and tabletops. And, oh, yeah, I guess I just didn't remember it. Um, let's see. There's no movie Titanic of the baby. Where can I come here? Where can I come here? I'm just skipping to see if there's like a comment I could answer. I'm trying to wrap up the live stream. Steve says, Alex, our phone conversations, they can go on for hours. Yeah, when me and Steve get going and talking about the Queen Mary, It'll last for hours, because I'm always trying to pick his brain about all kinds of Queen Mary information and stuff. So, he's like a wealth of knowledge. And then he gets a lot of information, too, from his friend um, Rob, because Rob is also extremely knowledgeable about the Queen Mary. So I'm able to kind of get knowledge from both of them. Carter, yes, I love Cunard Line. Uh, yeah, see you later, Chris Surface. Uh, Mike said, it's always fun to join the streams, not at all ever boring. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Marquette Productions. No, I didn't know that. Um, let's see. All right, I have reached the bottom. I don't think there's anything else I could really talk about. But all right, folks, thank you so much for joining me. Um, be sure to check out the video that should be coming either Friday or Saturday. And that is about um, the rise of the steam turbine engines. So it'll be all about how steam turbine engines change the ocean liner industry. Um, and uh, the next stream will probably be Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Um, It'll either be another tea time stream or possibly a stream of me working on the model railroad. Um, if that doesn't happen, then as always, Wednesdays, there will be a tea time stream. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so anyway, thank you all for joining me and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.